In this video, I'm going to explain what is a uh, character and a uh, narrative, as well as what's a narrative structure and the two common types of narrative structure, and how they are implemented in common media. To understand the difference of story and narrative, a story is a retelling of a past event, while a narrative itself is the retelling and interpretation of the story. A good example of a narrative would be to use the Goldilocks and the Three Bears story and change the setting instead of a forest to a modern city like New York or London. The character in a story is the vehicle of the story, as it is the driving force that moves the story from the beginning to the end. The main character or the protagonist is the main focus of the story, as the audience will follow and experience the events with the protagonist to create drama in story as another form of the drive to for the narrative. The simpler form of it is by having the protagonist clash with their villain or the antagonist. The antagonist is always the antithesis of the protagonist. They're the exact opposite of one another. Example of this will be the protagonist be dumb and bulky while the antagonist will be lanky and cunning. This is highly common on older stories and children's stories as it helps define the roles of the characters and more easily the audience can identify them. Another way to do this is to have two characters have similar backgrounds, but a certain event has shaped them to the way they are now. This is more common with modern storytelling as this is of reflectiveness of the protagonist could have been if the outcome of the event was different. Now I'm going to talk about the narrative structure. A uh, narrative structure is the important element of storytelling as this holds the, and maintains the order of the story and the genre. It also controls the pacing and the speed in which it is delivered. There are many different and intriguing narrative structures out there, but the two I'm going to talk about is the most likely used by the industry. They are the free act structure and the hero's journey. The first one we're going to talk about is the free act structure, which is, as the name suggests, it is broken up into three parts. The first part is the setup or the introduction. This part of the story is where the audience is introduced to the characters, their relationships, the dynamics, as well as the background of theirs and the setting. It is here an uh, event or a catalyst happens that knocks the natural balance of their world off balance. This is normally the protagonist that undergoes this as they are the main focus point of the story. The second act is the confrontation, it is which the main bulk of the action and tension is. This is normally the protagonist that undergoes this as they are the main focus point of the story. The character will learn to and change in their ordeals. This is character development. It is when the character of certain personality and point of view begins to change and unfold into a more deeper character with many levels of emotion and personality. It is here that the protagonist tries to fix the incident or finds a way to do so. Like the first act, there is another plot point. This serves as a tipping point for the story and developments of the stake and drama. An uh, example would be Buzz Lightyear first learns sees a toy and try to fly. In The Dark Knight Rises, Taya reveals her true identity to Batman. This is normally the protagonist that undergoes this as they are the main focus point of the story. The character will learn to and change in their ordeals. This is character development. It is when the character of certain personality and point of view begins to change and unfold into a more deeper character with many levels of emotion and personality. The next narrative structure is the hero's journey and it is my favorite one. This narrative structure is mostly concentrated to one character the individuality and development as a person. This is the oldest form of storytelling that a um, mythologist named Joseph Campbell noticed the similar pattern forming in the myths and legends of today. Joseph Campbell written a book named The Hero with the Thousand Faces. It is a book 
to read and I advise it to anyone learning any form of media to have a go on it since it is more in depth than I can do it justice. The first part of the structure is called the ordinary world. This stage is the introduction to the story and the exposition of the world and the character back. The next stage is the call to adventure. This is the part where the world of the protagonist is shaking and is given an invitation of the world of the adventure. This is the part in Star Wars The New Hope where Luke finds Leia's message in R2-D2 and in The Hobbit is where Bilbo is greeted by the Grey Wizard Gandalf. The next stage is the call to adventure. This is the part where the world of the protagonist is shaking and is given an invitation of the world of the adventure. The next stage is the refusal of the call. This is the scene where the character refuses due to reluctance or fear. This scene meant to humanize the character and remind us that they are a person with their own life and responsibility. This choice is changed, however, by the events of the destruction of their hometown or exiled by their people or The fourth stage is the meeting of the mentor or the supernatural aid. This is the part of the story where the character gains something in his ventures. The reason I lump them together is because all the sources that I have found either have one or the other. The mentor is an older and wiser character who takes the hero under the, his wing and teaches him his skill and knowledge for his quest, like Obi-Wan teaching Luke the way of the Force. The supernatural aid is an item of power and supernatural origin. This object gives the hero the strength to resolve the problems that are beset him. The aid must be meaningful to the context of the story, in such as a old sword from their mentor in an age of guns. The fifth stage is the crossing of the threshold. It is a part of the story where the hero is near the point of leaving their old world and enter the supernatural world. This is a rite of passage that the hero must decide to cross to the new world, but however, are barred from returning until the task in hand is done. Like the matrix with the two pills, one red and one blue. Another form of uh, the crossing of the threshold is a creature blocking the path. This is called a threshold guardian. This is meant to test the hero's resolve and commitment. The hero must deal with the creature by either battling it to submission, solving the riddle, or testing the intelligence, or even just give it a tr something as a tribute it asked for. The sixth stage is the belly of the whale. It is the darkest part of the hero's journey as he is no longer safe or protected by the old world, as now he is thrust into a more dangerous and hostile world of the supernatural world. The seventh stage is the road of trials. It is the main bulk and meat of the story, where the hero is tested with challenges to test his skills, strength, and knowledge. Each test will become harder and harder while the hero gains new allies, skills, and ever-growing confidence and capability. The eighth stage is the meeting of the goddess, where the hero either finds or understands love. This is either a romantic or a maternal love, as this will help the hero learn compassion and kindness. This stage helps the hero become a more older and greater character than they were before. The ninth stage is the woman as tenantress. Despite the name, it is, does not need to be a woman in mind. The act itself is meant to tempt the hero away from the quest with either material gifts such as wealth, fame, women, and power. This test meant to test the hero's value and dedication to the task that has been set upon him. The tenth stage is the atonement of the father. This is the part where the hero must face the ultimate power. The ultimate power could be any sort of materialistic form, either a god or a high figure being like a king 
or it could be a symbolic one like an ideal or a belief. The hero must mend his ways with the ultimate power. It could be by persuading or overthrow this power in general. The eleventh stage is called the apotheosis. This is where the character dies and is reborn as a higher being. It is here that the hero gains perfection, enlightenment, and self-discovery of the power and knowledge to traverse through the hardest trials. If all the trials and tests is complete, and the main goals of the journey is achieved, this is the stage, the twelfth stage, where the boon is passed to the hero. Boon itself it can be anything depending on the context of the story or the very source of the adventure in the first place. This could be in many forms such as the cure for, for your il the hero's healing village or a trial that the king has set upon the hero. With a ward in hand, the hero can choose to return home of their knowledge and the reward they have obtained in this journey or they could stay in this world. Many characters who choose this stage is the refusal of the return. Since the character has gained enlightenment and adventure in the spiritual world, they, they are no longer being held with the ordinary world where their old life is no longer entertaining or fulfilling anymore. On the other hand, many heroes may choose the magic flight. It is in this part of the journey they return back to their ordinary world. It is called this because many stories and media alike normally pass through this the return journey as it is not as intense or dramatic as the journey to the adventure. Thus it is normally skipped. There are many f more stages that I left out in the hero's journey. I have to cut them short due to time restraints and other factors. And this is why I like the hero's journey, as it is the story of not just a hero going to an adventure, but it's in also a psychological story about the journey of oneself. Another other perspective, the hero's journey is the journey of a child at ascending adulthood. As you can see many perspectives where the ordinary world is the stage of a child's life where he is still a child and the descent to adventure is the journey of being a man and the rite of passage to being a man. Many media who use the hero's journey as a formula or two don't sometimes use all the stages in the formula. Thus, a good example that I can think of will be in the game called Journey where they follow some aspects of the hero's adventure but they left out the god meeting of the goddess and the a woman as temptress in the story. Thank you for watching this video on narrative and narrative structures. Special thanks to Kevin Malloy for making and distributing free royalty music to allow other people to use them as well. If you haven't seen the video about the history and development of the media, please click on this annotation over there. In this Link, I'm going to talk about the difference of digital media to conventional media and the difficulty of digital media.